and welcome to Ellen Ruth Soap. I'm Ellen and today I'm making a soap using this fragrance from Nurture Soap, Sunkissed Cocoa. Boy, this smells really, really good. I just love it. It's a really good blend of a sweetness and some kind of earthy scent. Um, one of the things I love about Nurture Soap is they give you uh, notes on the label, which makes it so easy to use when I grab a uh, fragrance off my shelf and it has all the notes already written on there. So it says no acceleration, light tan discoloration. Uh, it has 0% vanillin, but it does say it discolors. And it says use up to 6% in soap. So that's really handy information. Smells fantastic. So let's talk about the soap design. I wanna do a hanger swirl and the colors that I'm gonna be using to go with the sun-kissed cocoa is uh, I'll be using Tangerine Mica from Be Scented. This is gorgeous. This is my sun-kissed portion. And then for the cocoa, I'm gonna actually use cocoa powder. Cacao powder, if you say it like they say. This is a wonderful soap additive. I think uh, cocoa powder has great skin benefits. It's full of vitamins and minerals, and uh, it soaps really well, and it colors to a beautiful chocolatey brown. So that's gonna be the body of the soap. And then I wanna do a little piping on top. With the orange, I wanna do little star dollops using my, let's see if I can read it. Using my Wilton 1M star tip, I wanna do little orange star dollops. And then with my, let's see, my Wilton 1A open hole with the chocolate or the cocoa brown. I want to do like a Hershey kiss type. So stars and Hershey kisses on the top I thought would really represent the smell. It's just so good. Uh, this will be a goat milk soap and I will do the milk in oil method today. So let me get everything pulled together and let's come back and make some sun-kissed cocoa soap. All right, we are back for soap additives time and I have some good news and some bad news. <laughs> the good news is this fragrance smells amazing. The bad news is Nurture Soap no longer carries this fragrance. Um, I did buy this a while ago and it's been sitting waiting to be used and they don't carry it anymore. So I won't be able to duplicate this again. So anyway, it smells great. We're using it today, but um, it's not, they have other fabulous scents that I think are similar with the citrus complex with a little bit of coca and vanilla and it's just good. Well, all that being said, Ed, the fragrance is already in here. Let's get to the additives. We're doing goat milk in oil today. So here is my creamy goat milk. I'm gonna add it right on in here. And I've water discounted from my lye solution to make room for this. All right, and the dry ingredients. I have my colloidal oats and my kale and clay. As per usual with me, this is a two tablespoon scoop. It's a little bit heaping and I just think it's fabulous. And I think the oats kind of go along with the foodie theme. There we go. Heaping two tablespoons go in there. I use dry additives at a rate of one teaspoon to one tablespoon per pound of oils or thereabouts. It's really not a hard and fast rule. You'll find the amounts that you like in the finished bar. So this is what I like. Let's get this blended up and we will come back when our lye water is finished cooling off. back and ready to roll. Here is my lye solution, which has cane sugar, tuss of silk, and sodium lactate. And I've talked about that before in other videos. The sugar is a lather booster. The silk just feels glorious in the lather. I love how it feels. And the sodium lactate helps for easy unmolding the next day. So that's why I put all those additives in there, but they are completely extra. You can make a lye solution without them. So I'm gonna blend this up to a nice emulsion and we will get it split off to our colors and then I will save off a little of this batter. I'm not making an extra batter today for the piping. Um, I'm just gonna save some of this batter to do some piping on top and uh, all of that, let's get to it. So look at this beautiful ivory color. As the lye reacts with the goat's milk in here, you're gonna watch it kind of beige up and get caramelized a little. Um, this fragrance does discolor to a light tan, but what you're actually seeing is the sugars reacting with the lye here. See that? Um, and if this wasn't a discoloring fragrance, that would bounce back after it did its saponification thing. But there we go. I just love the chemistry of soap making. Let's get our colors over.
it's the next day and ta-da there's the top um, and look at how beautiful and orange that mica color came out. When I poured it, it looked almost red. It was very dark, which was beautiful, but this is what I was going for. I wanted it to represent sort of the orange citrus notes in this fragrance. And of course, the chocolate kisses. I'm loving it. So let's get in here and see how the swirls look on the inside. We are back with the lovely Olga. Time to get into our first loaf. And I really like how uh, mild that orange is. I think it looks citrusy and just perfect. It's almost peachy looking. Um, and I'm super happy with the top. I, you know, just really happy with this soap. It smells fantastic. I'm a little bit sad that uh, Nurture Soap isn't carrying this fragrance anymore. It behaved beautifully um, and it smells fantastic. So. I'm gonna to have to check out their other fragrances that are similar to this. Maybe they just changed the name on it. Look at that. Oh, I think this represents the, the scent. I wish you could smell it too. It's It definitely has that fruity citrus kind of tart with some milk chocolate notes. It's good. So, all right, let's keep going here and seeing our swirly patterns. And I think most assuredly, we will have some soapy patterns at the end here. So that is always fun for me. You know I love those soapy patterns. I don't know why I just get the biggest kick out of them. I, it's like a, war, am I saying it right, Rorschach test? I love that, or like I spy. So it's fun for me. I hope you all enjoy it too. I always love my patterns. So, and um, it's a little, do you see how the beige part is a little dark right there? It will lighten up to that color as this is exposed to air. Um, that is just from going through gel phase, uh, but it's it's done gelling, but you'll see a lot of times when I cut my soaps, they are a little bit darker cast in the middle and they lighten up as, as they should. And of course, this is gonna stay this ivory color because uh, this fragrance did say that it discolors just a little, not bad. So it's not gonna be bright white, but I think that ivory color is gorgeous and it goes along with the fragrance. I just think these look scrumptious. <laughs> All right, let's get into our next loaf and let's talk about that chocolate brown, um, which I am loving. Oh, and by the way, I did not steam the top or anything. I just put the wooden cover on this, no blanket. Um, so I didn't do anything to the tops and I thought they looked fine. I didn't want to mess with a good thing. But that chocolate brown color, um, I did go a little bit light on the cocoa powder when I blended it up, pre-blended it in some water beforehand. and. Also, two things, with the um, cocoa powder, I would recommend in the future blending it with oil instead of water because it was a little bit chunky and that blended out just fine, but um, I think oil would have made for a smoother cocoa powder. And I didn't put enough in there to really get the depth of brown. I really wanted a chocolate brown and I felt like after blending it that it was looking a little gray cast and I didn't want gray. I definitely wanted a chocolate brown. So I added some dark chocolate brown mica from Be Scented. That's what I topped this off with just a little and together those colors, the cocoa powder and the brown mica, I think I've got the perfect cocoa color. I'm very happy with how that came out. So these center swirls are quite busy, but I love it. So fun. Oh, and let me show you. When I have piping, oftentimes I will have a little bit extra soap and I throw them in my little flower mold that I keep off to the side. And um, I just think these are wonderful. They make fabulous guest soap. So no soap goes to waste. When I'm piping, I always have a little extra mold off to the side to catch it. All right, let's get into our last loaf. I just love the little kisses with the twirls on top. They're so fun and they're easy to pipe. If you are a beginning soap piper, a pattern like this, the little stars and kisses was very simple 
easy to do. It would be a great pattern for a new soap piper. Don't try one of those fancy, you know, rosebud complicated piping. Try something simple like this. It comes out beautiful and um, not, not hard to do at all. And by the way, I am not a fancy piper at all. I have never decorated a cake before. Um, and the very first time I tried to do soap piping, I did something really simple like this and I realized that it wasn't that hard and it looks fabulous. It just adds a little something special on top of your soaps. I love it. So these are gonna sit out for a good couple of hours and just let the air kind of harden the surface area up. This is the outside of the mold. It's much firmer feeling than the inside when you cut a soap fresh. So I like to wait a few hours, then we'll come in and do the beveling and the stamping, which is, you know, it's kind of an aggressive action on your soap. So I like them to be a little firmer. Some people will wait till after the cure time and right before they wrap before they do it. But I like to get my stamp in there within 48 hours of cutting. Then I find for me and my soap recipe that I get the best impression of my logo stamp if I do it like a few hours later or the next day at least. That's, how, that's what works for me. And of course, that probably depends on your soap recipe things like that. There's so many different factors when you make soap. There's so many different factors that goes into it. So you just kind of have to play around and find what works best for you, your recipe, all of that. So thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed today's video. I sure had fun making it and I hope you have a wonderful day.